Good morning, YouTube fans. Admiral Preparedness here. It's time for prepping for beginners lessons. We're going to go into our favorite Walmart here because it's the place we go where prices are the lowest. I don't want to hear no complaints about why I go to Walmart because most of the other grocery stores around here, prices are about 10% more. So, in saying that, folks, when you do your shopping, always shop for product, availability, and cost. We'll be right back. You know you live in a high inflation world when a, just a single ear of corn is 33 cents. A single ear of corn is 33 cents. Mercy. Well, folks, when it comes to buying your fresh fruits and vegetables at your local market, it can be a little pricey depending on where your food comes from. A lot of times you can go to your markets and find low prices for fruits and vegetables but when you're putting things aside for dehydrating or putting them in your recipes always think about the nutrient content and your bang for your buck while prepping you need to understand that as a beginner you're going to try to find things that are going to last a long time on your shelf items heavy in oils will spoil sooner than items without oils. Always remember to learn how to cook. Get your mom's, grandma's, great-grandparents cookbooks, ones that they had when they were young. Those cookbooks still work today, folks. They still work today. You save a whole lot of money and a whole lot of trouble when you buy your own freshly baked goods. Here's one of those items that you wouldn't think had a fairly decent shelf life, 90 calories, the shelf life here, 326.20, sands a real long time, the test of time, but you're going to spend two dollars. These are what are called creature comforts. If you have your own garlic supply, this is not a bad deal. Learn how to make your own spreads. Look at all those ingredients, folks. Is that really what you want to put inside yourself during a SHT event? I honestly would if I had to, but guess what? It's one of those things where it's a creature comfort. So you have to decide, are you going to put this in your pantry? Cycle it through, because we all know that garlic spreads fantastic on homemade breads. So I would probably take this home, put it in my pantry, and use it before the best buy date. Maybe have three or four behind it. The old saying is, you know the drill, one is none, two is one, three is two. So buy two. If you can afford it, if not, then just pass it by and put it on your list. And if you've noticed that now the manufacturers are starting to put their products in flexible containers such as this, it's not mylar, but it will last quite a long time in storage. If space is an issue for you, this is something you might think about getting. Also, you could put this in a vacuum sealer without having to open it up. Now look at that Best Buy date, folks. That's a pretty good time for all those fishes. When you're out there scavenging and you find some fish, you could have this in your backpack. Very small amount of ingredients needed to continue the cooking of it. Always look at the continued items of what you're going to try to purchase, what other items needed that you need to use in order to make it wholesome and useful. What a great product. And it's only $1.88. And as always, with all types of fish, there's always all kinds of ingredients you can use. Old Bay, mild, hot, spices, you have to have spices. When shopping in your general shopping, always look for foods that are vacuum sealed, as these will freeze better without becoming frostbitten. 
repackaging and re refreezing is one of those things where it's just a little bit touchy to have to do. But you don't want to always worry about getting frostbite. So when you put something into your freezer, expect about three months. Repackage it or use it right away, but don't let it thaw and then try to refreeze. And just as a general note that I've noticed, Walmarts now are starting to put their products behind glass doors because it's energy efficient. They also have these systems where the lighting will turn off, saving more money. All that savings gets returned right back to you folks. Remember that all that savings at these grocery stores gets put right back into your pocket. So remember, shop the grocery stores with the most efficient appliances. That's the savings for you. They pass down to you, the customers. They want you to come back, folks. Those folks who are lucky, to have, lucky enough for beginner preppers that are allowed owning a food dehydrator allows you to be able to save your eggs or freeze dry your eggs. These items here are normally going to be going out of style very quickly once the trucks stop delivering. Having a nice supply of tissues is not a necessity, but think about it. What would you use if you didn't have it? And until you can figure out a way to make these yourself, you need to get a good supply up. Think about the items that you use at home every day. And just buy two instead of one when you go shopping. Add that to your budget if it's on a tight, tight budget. Garbage disposal during a grid down event is very, very important. You need to make sure that you keep your areas clean. The less cleanliness, the more rodents, the more insects. You do not want to attract anything that can cause you to become ill because of infectious bites or anything that might cause trouble with you with insects and rodents. Avoid at any cost styrofoam products. They are very detrimental to the environment and you have no way to di dispose of them unless you bury them. Speaking about burying, you gotta go when you gotta go. You know what to do here folks. Compostable straws. Paper plates would be my most preferred method for disposable dinnerware. Paper plates because they would degrade in the ground. Remember, you're going to have to use something if, unless you have a lot of supply of water. Think about wind dixing it during the SHT event. All you got to do is put it in the trash or bury it. Personal hygiene is very important. Flushable wipes. Are a nice necessity you definitely want something that you can have around just in case you're unable to use your TP but these have an excellent shelf life as long as they stay sealed in their containers the moisture cannot get back out plus you can re-moisturize them at any time just add a little bit of water when thinking about soft drinks remember that container is reusable on the large liter bottles if you have a good water supply available, you can wash them out, let them dry, fill them full of whatever rice, beans, flour, sugar, other items that you want to store for long term. Keep them out of the waste stream, folks. Reuse, reduce, and reuse these containers whenever possible. And as a reminder, folks, if you have to have your shot of your frappuccino, these containers can be reused that lid can be reused because of a seal that they provide on the upper part of the lid. Always try to reuse these items, especially glass. Most of your best buy dates on these type of food products is approximately one year. If you put them in a tote where it's airtight container, 
stored at a decent room temperature below 68 degrees, you should have a decent shelf life. But remember, these are the kind of items that you want to rotate out frequently. Nuts are high in oil, so these items don't have a very long shelf life. So you rotate them out frequently. And yes, I consider popcorn a comfort food, but tell you what, popcorn is not inexpensive anymore, but it will last longer if as long as it's the kind that doesn't need to be shot in the microwave. As for instance, these will last a very long time. Any type of jerky product is definitely, definitely a winner when it comes to long-term food storage, as long as the moisture is removed. Oxygen removal and moisture packets is a definite must when long-term storing jerky. You can make your own with your dehydrator. It's all about learning how to do it, folks. Save yourself some money. Do your own dehydrating. Make your own jerky. And folks, if you think about it, a very small microwave that's only 800 watts to 700 watts is perfect for a small bug out location. And for under $50, you can't beat that. Plus, it'll operate off your inverter. So you can still eat, be able to heat some food up with today's technology and an SHTF event. So think about it. Purell. Always have hand sanitizer in the house at all times. A compact blender would be perfect for a bug out location. Low wattage, get you done, get your drink, get your mixing, get you going. And also don't forget about food processors. These things don't use that much electricity folks if you have a battery backup system with an inverter. You don't have to live in a stone age during an SHTF long term event. Disposable baking goods. Definitely something that would be thoughtful to keep in the stock. An inexpensive coffee maker for those mornings that when the lights are out, you can still have your hot cup of coffee. This is one of my favorite sections. It's the little bottles for air travel. Listerine, toothbrushes, those things you definitely want to have. I know most of you have something like this in your garage or your attic or your basement or out in your shed. So take them out, clean them out, try them out. Spare sleeping bags, spare camping equipment, all that stuff that some of your friends and neighbors are throwing out is not trash. A tornado comes in, tears up your house, go downstairs or in your storage area and break out your emergency preparedness products. Watch FEMA come by and wave as they drive by knowing you don't need their help. Everybody needs some kind of a tackle box. Could be for medical supplies, could be for fishing. These guys are not that expensive whatsoever. Folks, I'm a firm believer of having extra everything because if you have to leave your home and you took everything with you and that was taken from you by some scavenger or thief or you went back to your homestead and found it can be completely scavenged out except for where you stash stuff, you'll have your cooking gear and all your things that you need. It is budget busting if you try to go crazy about it, but just think about it simply. Knife, forks, spoons, plates, bowls, cooking utensils, Things that you would go without that you don't need to go without. Low power consumption appliances today are a lifesaver. Remember, look at the wattage and then consider that when you purchase your next appliance. Scented candles are a must. 